I was like, well, you know, this year I probably made more money off of Heroes of the Storm than I did working、uh, my real job, even.、So. What? The new, the new, the new school. school. The new school. This is the new school with your host Christine Hong. Welcome to a new kind of school where we talk about career paths you don't normally get to hear about in the classroom. Every episode, I talk to someone with an interesting life path and learn about how they got to where they are today. Hey guys, welcome to the show. My guest today is Fan Yang, who lives off playing video games. That's right. This guy gets up, plays his favorite video game, Heroes of the Storm, and that is how he makes a living. He walked me through his journey of how he was able to quit his day job to play Heroes of the Storm full time competitively as a member of the World Championship team, and then how he was able to pivot to become a live streamer and how he makes a living off that currently. This guy is super resourceful, and his love for the game really shines through. I think you're really gonna enjoy this interview. First of all, thank you for being here. No, my pleasure. Welcome to the show. How did you get started in gaming? Yeah, for gaming in general,、um, I think I've just been a gamer my whole life. Like some of my earliest memories,、uh, I moved to the United States from China when I was like six years old or something. So some of my earliest memories, even back in China when I was six years old or younger, I remember just、uh, playing on my dad's computer, playing all these mini games, stuff like that. So I, I would say I've pretty much been a gamer、uh, my entire life. I would say the first game that I got super into was a game called StarCraft.、Uh, it's actually made by the same company that makes Heroes of the Storm, Blizzard Entertainment. Which is based here in Irvine, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, after I moved to the states, maybe when I was in middle and high school,、uh, StarCraft was the game that I was playing the most. It had a lot of potential because it also had like a custom game engine. So in addition to playing the game like the publishers meant you to play,、uh, users could actually go in the game and just. Uh, they had map editing tools, and they they could essentially make their own game within the game. So、oh, that's so cool. Yeah,、okay. there's a lot of variety in that one,、uh, and that's the one I played most extensively, I'd say. So when did you get even more into gaming, or even start thinking like, hey, I could do this full time? Uh, yeah. So back then in middle school, around that time too, I discovered that people in Korea were. Doing this professionally, and there was a profession called professional gaming,、um, and you know back then I was like, "Wow, these people can just play games all day, and they're like treated like celebrities over there in Korea." And really, like people, the way people treat like football team, yeah, here? exactly. So it would just be like a football star or a basketball star here, except they were playing.、Uh, You know, video games. They were playing what they called esports, electronic sports, instead of、uh, physical sports. And how did you even find out that existed? I've never heard of it till a couple years ago. Um, I'm not even sure, but I think probably just you know on one of my random YouTube searches about StarCraft and the game because I was super into it. I was watching videos about it,、yeah. and then I was like, oh, it's.、Uh, There's a competitive match here. What does this mean? And you know, you just go down the YouTube chain. And eventually, I'll get to matches where、yeah. I see them compete on big stages and stadiums, and like all the people are cheering for them. Is that like all the Asian countries? Are they really big on gaming like that, or is it just Korea? I think it's mainly Korea. At least back then, it was.、Um, so that game, StarCraft,、uh, it was almost like a national sport for Korea. It was really, really famous, specifically in South Korea.、Um, Basically, everyone knows about it. You know, everyone knows the pro players. It'd be like basketball in the United States, almost like just it's a、uh, throughout their whole country. Esports as a whole is kind of rising up everywhere in the world. But、um, yeah, back then it was just StarCraft and StarCraft by itself, and a lot of people think that StarCraft was what started the whole. Yeah, esports phenomenon. Why you do、know? you think it's so big now? Why is it getting even bigger? I think that's pretty much、uh, similar to. Just any regular sport. Like at the end of the day, when you think about it, all these regular sports or physical sports like basketball, soccer, these are games. At the end of the day, right? They're playing a game and、uh, they're playing like championships to find out who is the best at playing this game. 
So I really think that esports uh, is no different. Uh, the only difference is the game is online instead of in person, but everything else is pretty much true. Right? You're competing against other people in a game that presumably a lot of other people play. Uh, you know, basketball fans probably watch basketball. They probably play basketball on the side as well, right? Maybe that's part of why they watch it. Is it common for a celebrity who like was really good at StarCraft and now be really good at League of Legends so they keep their trek going or is that uncommon? Because it'd be like switching between like baseball and football or something. Yeah, I would say it's pretty that doesn't usually happen because to be a star at a sport in the first place, you, you need to train for so many hours every single day and you pick up specifics that are really just part of your sport uh, and even if Let's say you're a basketball pro and you're in like peak physical condition. And it doesn't necessarily mean you can just go to soccer and be a star there, right? There's still so many other like stuff, you know, knowledge that you have to know about the other sports. So I would say it's very rare, but it's not uh, impossible. Actually, one of my friends from Heroes of the Storm, my former teammate, uh, he stopped playing about a year ago. Uh, to play a different game uh, called Fortnite. Uh, um, Everyone knows Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and today, actually, he actually got the second place in the World Cup and he just won like $1.8 million. Wait, so that sounds really hard because it's like entertainment where you have to catch on to the latest trends. Um, but it's also like sports with the train like endlessly because at least if you're really into tennis or basketball you can just train really really hard because it's not going away in terms of popularity right but you also could train really really hard starcraft and then it like goes away in popularity and now you have to learn a new game how do you uh figure out which game to concentrate on well for most players i don't think they go professional intentionally uh i would say so, I mean, there are there are obviously some that want to go pro from the start, uh, but for most players, they just uh, start their path uh, because they really like a game and they play it a lot uh, for the sake of playing the game, for the sake of you know having fun. They start out like any other normal person, and what usually ends up happening is they get really good at playing a game, and then uh, they kind of uh, maybe they get some. Uh, offers for some small tournaments or something like that. And that's usually how it starts for most people. I'd say most people don't intend to make this a profession. They start from their love of the game and just playing for fun. And then, you know, if they're good enough, then eventually they can get to the point where they're competing. But as you said, it is quite difficult because esports are changing very rapidly. Uh, in that sense, I think it's a lot different from a uh, physical sport, which you pretty much know is going to be there. When did you uh, make your transition? Did you just play law in college and then you got a job and you, you dropped out of the job? Uh, yeah, for me, it was similar. I started playing uh, Heroes of the Storm for fun. At that time, the game had just came out. It was like maybe four years ago or so. Um, a bunch of our friends just were like, oh, Blizzard's making a new game. We should uh, try it out. So... All of us were playing it uh, just because it was a new game and we're doing it for fun. At the time, I did have a job, so I would just play on the weekends or play at nights. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually I got good enough. Uh, or Since it was a new game, I would say the skill level to become really good was pretty easy to reach. Right? If you're playing a game yeah. where everyone's been playing for like 10 years, then it's going to be really hard to reach the top because everyone else has like 10 years of experience on you. But since it was a new game, uh, yeah, within like, I'd say two, three, four weeks a month, uh, I, I was already like maybe in the top 200 players or so that were playing like the rank system. And oh, from cool. there, I got some invites to small tournaments and whatnot, I entered a few small tournaments with friends these were like really small i mean like a hundred dollars for the winner or something just like community run events um we played in a few of these uh, tournaments just for fun um and yeah we we did like okay we were playing against some of the top players in the game we didn't win any of them but we, we showed that we were not bad we we could uh like give decent games and after that, I got an invite to join like one of the more 
uh, I guess it's hard to call them pro teams at that time because not many people were sponsored at that time, but one of the more established teams uh, full of players who were trying to do this full time. Um, so I got invited to join a team like that. So, you know, took the invite, started playing with a more established team. And then after playing for maybe like another month, I got another like invite mm-hmm. to join like a pro team that was backed by a club called Cloud9. So I just kept going like that. And that's kind of how I got in the pro scene. Oh, wow. Okay. And so is Cloud9 that team where you won the world championship with? Right, right. Uh, but when I first got the invite, they actually had two teams. One was like called Cloud9 Vortex. One was called Cloud9 Maelstrom. But um, essentially, I got an invite to like the B team, right? And uh, the after playing on the B team for a few months, yeah. uh, the main roster yeah. had a opening. And then they invited me to join that. And uh, okay. that's the team that I ended up winning the uh, world championship with. So when you're playing Heroes of the Storm tournaments, you were just doing it outside of work. Was that really difficult to balance that with your day job? It was definitely not easy. But back then, it was kind of still the start of the scene. So, um, What was your day job at the time again? I worked as a... Basically like a tech uh, analyst. Just Excel spreadsheets, that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, so why did you decide to go full time into gaming? Yeah, so I, I decided to go full time after I won the world championship with Cloud9, actually. Of Heroes of the Storm? Right. In, That's casual. Okay. Yeah, in world 2015. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. And, you know, the thought process there is pretty much, well, I just won the biggest tournament that this game has to offer. It was, I think we we each won i'm not sure maybe fifty thousand dollars or something like that for per player um i was like well you know this year i probably made more money off of heroes of the storm than i did working uh, my real job even so what? um how much money did you make that year i don't remember maybe like 70 80 thousand off heroes of the storm something like that oh it's like well, this this is something that I enjoy doing a lot. Um, while I did like my job, I, I still liked playing games more. Are you scared to leave your job? <laughs> yeah, I definitely was. But it was like a lot less scarier because I already had some security. I was already on a team. I was already uh, winning tournaments, stuff like that. So it was definitely scary. But since I already had uh, kind of a proven success, I wasn't too worried about it. So um, when you left your job to do Heroes of the Storm full-time, what was your schedule like? What's your day-to-day like? Yeah. So for a full-time pro gamer, it would basically be... Uh, the practice was between all 10 players, so it had to be like a time that all 10 players were acceptable with. So back then, I would maybe wake up around 11 a.m. or so, and then practice begins around noon. And we'd play for maybe six hours. Um, We'd practice against other teams. Uh, It would be just practice time for six hours. Uh, And after six hours, practice is done. uh, And I would probably just like play the game normally or turn on my stream and just play uh, like by myself in the game's matchmaking. What's the focus of the practice like? Um, it's just it's about developing strategies that your team uses, or just uh, uh, just uh, trying to get better overall, trying to get more fundamentally sound, right? So it's a little bit of both, both developing strategies and just making sure everyone gets repetitive practice and just yeah makes their fundamentals better. Yeah. Can you give me a specific example of a practice, like what strategies you would work on? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it depends on but what team I was on or what we thought we were weak at. But, um, for example, we would just go into practice one day and we would be like, okay, today we need to make sure that we communicate everything properly because it's a very fast-paced game. And if someone doesn't uh, communicate properly, you can uh, have issues really fast. So it's 
it'd be like today we need to try to focus on just saying everything make sure you know no one on their team does anything that we don't know about make sure we're staying talkative at all times or we, it would be like okay today we just need to focus on not getting uh picked you know we're dying way too much in the early game and it's affecting our game too much like today we just need to be extra careful like everyone pay super close attention make sure you do not die in the early game do you just communicate with headsets yeah uh how where do your teammates live um they could be pretty much anywhere in the united states yeah so what would happen is uh we just go on like a voice communication you know like a discord or a skype or team speak and you just have all five people in the same voice room and uh yeah it doesn't really matter too much where they live and it's, most people are in the u.s or canada and you just play online so there's no teammates outside america usually usually no uh when you get to different continents the ping becomes really high which means that the game actually starts uh like if i was to play for a team in korea or something because i'm in america uh you know all of the commands that i issue in game would be maybe like two seconds slow so i could click something oh. and then nothing would happen for two seconds because the ping would be so high and that's so critical for a game. right right i see and on top of that in the actual leagues very often the esports leagues have uh like region restrictions where you have to be living in america if you want to play in the american league probably for the best i feel like the time zone difference would kill you too yeah that as well there's a lot of problems when, you, when it comes yeah. to that. Yeah. So how do you even bond with your teammates because you're not hanging out in person? Or does that even matter? Um, I, th I would say bonding with teammates is like a situational thing. Uh, I mean, to a certain extent, you do bond with them. Like just spending six hours every single day with someone playing a game is a pretty good way to bond with them, I would say. Um, you're chatting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And but on top of that, I would say bonding is somewhat situational. I would say the best teams were the teams that bonded well and could work together because at the end of the day, like you you are still coworkers as well. So technically you don't really need to bond with anyone else. You could just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just do your six hours like, okay, I'm leaving work. Like you, you could you could hate a coworker but you could still work with them. So are there a minimum amount of practices you need to make? Uh, yeah, so esports is not really advanced to a point where there's like substitute players for every team or something. Normally, for most esports, you're gonna have exactly the amount of players needed on the team. So everyone is required to be there at every practice, essentially. And if you're sick or something, like your team can get someone else to practice for you, but, um, the vast majority of the time, every every player is needed. The sixty eighty thousand a year you made when you quit, how where does that money come from? Well, so for that, it's pretty much uh, all prize money. So from winning tournaments, like the BlizzCon tournament itself was like fifty thousand dollars out of that already. So it was like a few other tournaments, and on top of that, being sponsored by a professional team like Cloud9, for example, they would have a contract with you, so they would pay you like a salary every month. So they would pay you like you know so much dollars every single month oh, really? for being a player of their team. How much? Back then, okay. I was like the inception of the game, so it was like very small. I mean, uh, maybe like two to four hundred in that range. Uh, but as esports progressed, like. Uh, in 2018, for example, I, I know the average salary for uh, a team that uh, was in the Heroes of the Storm would be probably around like $1,000 a month. Oh, that's still not enough to live, though. So are you still mostly making money off tournament money? Right, right. I would say the majority of the uh, money comes from winning tournaments. Is that nerve-wracking or once you've won, like a couple of major tournaments you're like i'm gonna keep winning them and keep making money esports is definitely a very top end like the best of the best players they're they're very well off whereas most of the other players are not well off so yeah it would be the maybe the top one or two teams at least in heroes of storm would be making good money like maybe and 
sixty to a hundred thousand dollars, somewhere in that range, whereas everyone else would be making like under thirty thousand. I see. Okay, so only if you're in like the top two or three teams, you'll make like six figures a year. Uh, pretty much, yeah. How stable are these teams then? So it's probably hard to leave the team because you're living off of it, basically. <gasps> Yeah, uh, they're pretty stable overall. If you're a top team in Heroes of Storm, like maybe sometimes you'll like swap one player, like maybe two at most at the end of the season. But usually, top teams will stick together for a lot longer, and they're a lot more stable than the bottom teams because of well, the compensation they're getting, and you know, a team that wins is just more likely to stay together yeah, than a yeah, team that loses. Yeah. Yeah. How long are these seasons? One season was. I mean, it's it's different. Every esport has like their own definition on how long their seasons will be and stuff like that. But um, for us, it was basically like a full year. Uh, a full year would be like the entire circuit, and then it would be divided into like part one of the circuit is the first six months, and part two is the second six months. And every every esport is different. Everyone yeah. has their own structures. Gotcha. Okay, so you've been doing this full time for four years now. Yep. How has your career progressed over the past four years? Well, I would say for the first three years, I was just playing Heroes of the Storm. So it was kind of just trying to be the best in Heroes of the Storm. And, um, and you know, over the years, I've joined different teams, which either have offered me, uh, you know, higher salary uh, or... Uh, or I just think my chances of like winning the championship will be better with that team. I think their players are more promising. So it's basically the first three years. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're probably fielding multiple offers to join teams. How do you decide which team to join? Yeah. So for the majority of my career, uh, I just try to win as much as I can. And so uh, for the majority of my career, I join a team that i think has like the best players like oh i think this player is really really good i think if i join we're gonna be like the best team and we have the highest chance to win so that's usually uh what i join teams off of and yeah there was one exception where a team offered me a really high salary it was like the highest in the league at the point and uh oh. Uh, that's like the one time I joined a team where I didn't necessarily think that, but every other time it's pretty much just, I think I can win with this team. I think we have the highest chances of winning pretty much. And winning usually just means a lot more money. Because <laughs> so. you win the tournament. Yeah. Well, how much were you offered from that uh, team you said gave you the most money? Uh, it's actually still wasn't, it was like nothing crazy, a little over $2,000 uh, a month. So it's still nothing too crazy, but the Heroes of the Storm scene it, as an esport is relatively small to the uh, like dominant esports, right? So it would be more like the rugby or squash, not, <laughs> not the NBA. Where do these teams come from? Uh, how many are there? <laughs> uh, there's probably an infinite number of online teams out there, but there's uh, not that many like established teams. Technically, the number of teams out there is like limitless, but there's probably only 10 or 20 very popular ones. Are there any famous teams like they're just known for making winning teams uh yeah so those would probably be among like the 10 or 20 i talked about so like cloud nine for example is one of the biggest uh teams that are out there and these teams will generally be in multiple sports so cloud nine not only has like a heroes of the storm team in 2015 when we won but they also have like a league of legends team and they might also have like more recently, they might also have like Fortnite players that are competing under Cloud9. So they, yeah. they'll go through all the different like online games and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be in a lot of different ones and they'll have their brand in a lot of these different games. So that's a business in itself. Do they take a percentage cut of the winnings? Who is in charge? How does that work? Yeah. So, well, the person in charge is just whoever started the company. So, uh, for Cloud9, it's a person called Jack. He started a company a long time ago. I think he, he actually was like a manager at a, at a different team. And then he left to make his own team. I still don't get how these contracts work. What did they get in return for bringing you onto the team and paying you? One part of the way teams will make money is by percentage of 
this guy's tournament winning. Like if all of a sudden we get 20% of his winnings and he wins $2 million, right? And that's a reasonable amount of money. But I think the bigger part is like the branding and merchandising, which is once again, kind of like very similar to traditional sports. Like, uh, you know, a team that has like a Kobe Bryant, uh, they're paying him a lot of money and they're probably not making everything back just by what he is winning. But they can sell Kobe Bryant t-shirts. They can sell, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, like, like shoes. And do they, you have t-shirts or shoes of your name on them? Uh, yeah, I have a few, uh, jerseys. They're actually pretty common in esports. Like when, when you join an established team, usually, uh, that's actually one of the things, like they'll make you their jersey, which is like a custom t- team shirt. Uh, well, so, I mean, it's literally like a jersey, like what the NBA players wear. Okay. So. You quit playing tournaments like a year ago, right? Yeah, I stopped at the end of uh, last year. I started this year, yeah. Um, why did you quit? Um, for me, I just wanted a break. Uh, competing is very stressful. Uh, you're doing this for like an average of 10 hours every single day. Almost pretty much no break if you want to be the best of the best. So it's very stressful. And then dealing in a team environment is very stressful as well. It's like you have to tell other people what they're doing wrong. They, they, they're they telling you what you're doing wrong. And, you know, that environment is a very difficult environment to kind of manage. Um, is there a team leader or a coach? Uh, some teams have coaches, not all. And when, at times we do have a coach, but even with a coach, it could be difficult to manage. Um, and usually in game, there's a, like a shot caller, but not necessarily like a leader that like leads all the players. And then there might be like a captain, but, uh, and you listen to what he says in game, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, most, most people are pretty young. So it's not like there's just one player on every team that just leads the team effortlessly without any problems. You know, it's, this is the real world. There's all, <laughs> yeah. you know, even in your yeah. real job, your boss might lead your team, but that doesn't mean he's like, everything's happy within your team all yeah. the time. I guess I was wondering if there's any like famous coaches or anything. Uh, yeah, I would say there's very little famous coaching. Coaching is actually a pretty, uh, undeveloped in esports compared to traditional sports as a whole i would say um very the the money hasn't really spread to the coach side in in Mm. most esports so most coach positions are either underpaid or not paid and for that you're not gonna get the top quality talent yeah makes sense yeah because why would you quit to be a coach if you could play yeah so okay so you're getting very tired and burnt out from all the playing and practicing yeah and at the same time um streaming was also an alternative option and i knew that streaming the game i would probably make around the same money as i did playing professional so really um or i i wasn't sure but i had some other streamer friends who who said they made around the same so i was reasonably confident Uh, so you weren't too nervous or anything I I was definitely a little bit nervous because my stream was not like at the level it needed to be to make that. But yeah. I figured once I did it full time and I could stream much much longer, uh, yeah, I wasn't like too nervous. I I figured I'd at least give it a shot and see if uh, see if I could. How do people make money streaming? Uh, so you stream on Twitch and Twitch will pay you based off of a uh, of number of different things like they show ads to the sh- people watching your streams. Um, so you get like a little bit of ad money from, you know, however many people watch the ads. Nice. Uh, and they have this thing called subs or subscribers, which is basically people can pay $5 a month to kind of directly support you, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's like the biggest growth of uh, revenue on Twitch is like people... They'll, they'll pay $5 a month and they get some like side benefits. They get like cosmetic benefits, essentially. They get like um, specific emotes that, uh, your channel offers. Then they can use them in chat. They can use like, you know, emotes of like maybe a hero you put and. It's like a Kickstarter, basically. 
Pretty, pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. But if that's your main revenue stream, it still feels different because I can't think of anything else where they're like, hey, just ship in $5. And people are like, yeah, we'll just ship in $5 to support you. And that can be your main way of living. Yeah, it's very different from pretty much every other profession. I mean, I guess you pretty much nailed it. it it's kind of like a kick, Kickstarter or patron. Um, can you imagine if like regular artists or filmmakers or I don't know, they could just ask for five dollars from everyone and make enough to live and keep doing their their work they they love. Yeah, and it's pretty crazy, but I mean, I think that is kind of the future and where that's trending towards. Like artists, like some some music artists uh, have streamed on Twitch, and you know they get same as all the other streamers. They have that subscriber feature, and a lot of people will subscribe to them, but. I mean, for those artists, they already have their revenues like covered, so it's not just, like more money for them. Are the people who watch the stream just particularly giving? Do you give money to anyone? Yeah, I would say it's like a community kind of thing. It's just um, to draw a line to Netflix, like you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, like, if someone likes your stream, they could uh, potentially watch anywhere from like 30 minutes to like i don't know like four hours every night right so it, it would it's essentially entertainment for them so for like five dollars a month if if they watch maybe on average one hour every night of your stream so uh, you know they they're doing like seven hours every week yeah uh, kind of just like any other form of entertainment for them they if they sure. watch enough they wouldn't think much of it and they'll be like oh yeah it's probably good to show this guy some support and then you get like some special features, like everyone can see next to your name that you you're subscribed, and you get like special yeah. emotes stuff like That's that. That's so cool, but still so not the business model YouTube or Netflix does. Can you imagine if YouTube was like, "Hey, just pay five bucks to whichever artists you support"? People are just used to it being free. I don't want to pay for YouTube Red, right? And Netflix, like, I can't even imagine them doing that instead of requiring a, a subscription to even watch it. Yeah, for sure. I think live streaming is, well, it's really new and it's a growing thing. So it's definitely not like anything else in the world right now. It's yeah. in its own category for sure. Interesting. So what was that transition like? What's your lifestyle like now? Yeah, my lifestyle now is a lot chiller. I basically will stream from 5 to 6 to 12 or somewhere in that range typically. Um so, yeah, I'd wake up, you know, do some exercises, uh, do some errands, and t t turn on the when stream. When do you wake up now? Uh, anywhere from 2 to 4 p.m. Okay. 2 to 4 p.m. Usually 2 to 3. But, uh, yeah, wake up, you know, chill for a few hours, exercise, uh, do errands, turn on the stream. And At what time do you turn on the stream? Usually 5 or 6. It's okay. Kind of like whenever I feel like it, but usually around then. And usually, usually I'll stream maybe six to seven hours and around 12 or 1. Um, like 1 a.m.? Yeah. Okay. And, the, and then, yeah, I'll do like, you know, normal human stuff. <laughs> you know, I'll eat, I'll chill for a little bit, like watch, show, whatever, and then go to bed. At? Uh, usually around 4. Okay. Yeah. Is that pretty common or is that just more you? Uh, so that's just my, more me, I'd say. All streamers have like different schedules. Um, depending on the game you're streaming, uh, you can, because there, there can be multiple big streamers. And what will happen a lot of the time is like, oh, this streamer streams from like 1 to 7 p.m. So they're really big i just won't get as many views if they're on at the same time i am so strategic nice. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll start at seven and then i'll go from like you know seven to midnight so we don't overlap our time so a lot of s small stuff like that will happen cool it sounds like there's even more strategies though because it's not just about being good it's about getting a following and getting a fan base so how do you go about that uh yeah uh well for me I'm like, I started doing this maybe six months ago or so, so I'm very new at it, but it's kind of like just to 
being an influencer, it's kind of like uh, anything else. You know, you just try to make your stream really entertaining. Um, How? <laughs> well, for me, I try to offer like really high level gameplay because I used to be a pro, obviously. But yeah. also, I find that people like it more when you're talking versus not talking. And that's a big problem for a lot of streamers. Like they're not used to talking in front of a camera or they're maybe they're introverted and they're at home. You know? So a lot of people don't talk. So I try to like talk more, try to like interact with everyone that comes into my chat, um, stuff like that. Uh, recently started working on YouTube as like another avenue to, nice. you know, more exposure. So yeah, pretty much all of that stuff. Interesting. Cool. So, uh, the transition from, um, tournament playing to streaming, was it pretty easy for you? How did it go? How was the financial transition? Transition was pretty easy for me, yeah, because I already streamed even when I was playing tournaments. So it was just like much less time. It was just be like the two to four hours that I played af after practice. I would turn on the stream. So I was already streaming. I already had a smaller following, but I did have a following. Um, so yeah, transition was very easy. You know, just the next day I just didn't have the practice anymore. So I just turned on the stream right away and I would just stream longer. <laughs> like yeah. I would stream my entire practice time and my personal stream time. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was pretty smooth overall. Yeah. Uh, do you feel lucky or do you think that's pretty standard? I think, um, it's both lucky and like, uh, when I was playing professional, I tried to, for example, do every interview that I, uh, people asked me to do. I tried to like promote my brand to a certain degree. Uh, I actually turned on my stream i actually had a stream even when i was playing professional uh, a lot of pro players were did not bother to do any of those things because it was like just why bother right i didn't really make that much money off streaming back then it was like a lot of uh so i i think it was both a little bit of luck and i i had already kind of uh yeah at least tried to get myself exposed or yeah. get more exposure in like way back then so are there any downsides to streaming or do you like doing it uh well i definitely like doing it and it still doesn't like it doesn't feel too much like a job so it still feels more like i'm playing games which is just mm -hmm. like i don't really have any stress these days you know i just wake up when i w want to and it doesn't feel like i'm working really so yeah that sounds like really chill lifestyle <laughs> yeah uh so i definitely enjoy it a lot but but i feel like for a career strategy you're basically changing from concentrating on being like the best athlete to becoming more of like an influencer type right so what's it like to have to create a fan base for yourself and cultivate that yeah so that's definitely something i'm still working on and it's in the very early stages right now i'm just kind of doing what i'm doing and uh you know this main thing that i'm doing is like just, just be consistent i stream pretty much every single day and people can rely on my stream to be there so they more and more people will tune in over time uh, but yeah it's still very early it's definitely still very challenging space you know i'm not exactly sure about my strategy going on in the future either mm. yeah. but uh yeah it, it is very different but at the same time that is like a pretty natural progression a lot of pro players will become streamers after they play pro so yeah that's not like i'm the first one to do this it's pretty chill retirement strategy yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like uh selling shoes after you quit basketball yeah exactly. <laughs> so what's your favorite streams to watch by the way uh for me i don't watch too many streams but uh yeah for me it would just be some of the big ones like i mentioned ninja earlier and there's like some other people like him there's like other big streamers like Kriparian, shroud yeah uh, stuff like that or i'll watch like the league of legends esports broadcast yeah. you know i still enjoy watching like the other esports competition broadcasts stuff like that fortnite esports broadcast yeah. yeah why do you think ninja is so popular uh, i think he's just like the first person in fortnite so it's uh one of the ways you can be a really big streamer is you be the first big streamer in a game category so like when fortnite was still small and it didn't explode yet he was the biggest person streaming it and when it exploded he just exploded with it because he was already the number one streamer that's like the stream the yeah people see it like right there on the top when they click on fortnite so 
uh, yeah, when Fortnite exploded, you know, he just kind of exploded with it. So is that a strategy? Do you think you should hop on the new games that might trend? Yeah, uh, other people. I, I I think for streamers, that's a fairly common strategy to like uh, go to a new game and stream it before anyone else does, in the hopes that it'll blow up. I, I think that's like one of the strategies people do. But there's got to be something more entertaining about him, right? Or is he just like one of the best players? Oh, he's he's also like he he was one of the best players like in Fortnite when he started streaming. Uh, he's definitely like top zero point one percent or something. Yeah, so okay. that's like almost a given. They're either really funny, or really like you know, they can be like imagine Richard on stream and he just says random <laughs> things all the time. It can be really funny to people, right? So they're either really entertaining or they're really good, or maybe they're both. What are your um, plans going forward? Uh, I still plan to stream Heroes of the Storm. There's uh, a lot of people that don't stream it anymore, so I'm one of the like biggest Heroes of the Storm streamers, and I still enjoy the game. So. And the stream is still growing over time, so mainly I plan on doing Here's the Storm. But uh, yeah, I also like play a little bit in like new and upcoming games that come out. So I also you know play a little bit of those every now and then, and see where that goes. So you're checking out new games, see maybe there's another game you might concentrate on. Uh, well, yeah, pretty much. Like if there's another game that I like really enjoy or like, uh, but mainly I'm still pretty happy just playing Heroes. Yeah. yeah. Any regrets from your video game career so far? Um, nothing, no, nothing too big. I mean, I I did play a, a game called Dota before I played Heroes of the Storm, and that game has a lot more prize money in it. So, I guess my only regret would be maybe uh, not going with a title that could have made me like a multi-millionaire by now but mm-hmm. other than that really not much like i think heroes even though it's not the biggest game is still a really well-designed game it's a lot of fun so yeah I don't really have wow. much regrets yeah no i can tell you just really enjoy the game that's cool instead of wanting the glory that's awesome yeah uh-huh. what's the biggest mistake you think you've made in your career um Hmm, biggest mistake. I think maybe not being a team player. Uh, like when I was playing earlier stages, I was very much in the mentality that I, you know, I want to be the best. I'll, I'll prove I'll be the best. And I didn't really care about the team dynamics of a team at all. So, um, I think, uh, for me, it was more like the I only focused on as long as I play the best, all everything will be okay. Like I'm just gonna play the best I can. I only focus on myself, and I didn't really focus on like you know the other four people or the inter team dynamics and all all the differences that you know that can make. So yeah. I would say just maybe just too self centered. Would you go back in a tournament playing? Would I go back and play tournament again? Is that what you said? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely possible. I mean, of course, it depends on like the numbers, uh, what team I'm going to be playing with the situation, but I would say that stuff is still possible. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, let's say you have a godson trying to get into a uh, video gaming, like professionally, what advice would you give him? Um, well, I would say first and foremost, make sure you enjoy the game like uh i think pro professional gaming is kind of weird in the sense that uh you have to really just enjoy the the game a lot so make sure you're you enjoy the game and you don't want to just focus on the idea of getting paid to play a game Uh, only if you enjoy the game will you be good enough to like make it in my opinion yeah Um, that makes sense are there a lot of people out there who try to just play to get famous or make money I wouldn't say there's a ton, but I would say there's a growing number of people who want to do that because as this this idea becomes more widespread, as more people learn about like pro gaming and it's a thing, I'd say more people are like hoping that they can do it just based on the idea that they don't have to work. Uh, (laughs) It is work. You're playing like 12 hours a day. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Which is why if you if you don't enjoy it, you know. What? You, you not only will you not be successful, but it's actually also work for you if you don't enjoy it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, might as well get a job. I only have to work like eight hours a day. Right. 
<laughs> you got 30 seconds to promote yourself. Go. Okay, so you can find me at Fan Heroes of the Storm on YouTube uh, and everywhere else. It's Fan Hots, H O T S, Fan Hots on Twitter, on Twitch, um, and Instagram, everything else. Yep, that's about it. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed my interview with Fan Yang. I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed the show. Please support us by subscribing, rating us, and if you're feeling particularly generous, leave a review. Have a great day, guys. Try something new today.